Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tosh Customs and today we will be taking a wonderful, wonderful look at a personal project of mine, my custom Marvel Legends Viking, maybe as Guardian Red Hulk. Um, this is something that I've had on my mind to make for a while and really personal projects for me are just ways to kind of, I guess, test myself and do something interesting that probably wouldn't end up a conventional um, commission, um, but something that I'm really interested in making and usually personal projects are ways for me to do something a little bit grander and a little bit over the top that requires more time and um, a little bit more thought and effort than a normal commission would. Basically, because I'm doing it on my own time, it gives me liberty and freedom um, to take the time I need to deconstruct what I need to deconstruct, um, you know, without having to feel rushed or worry about customer updates. So this guy, I worked on him on and off for probably a month and a half, two months while I was doing other commissions. This guy would just sit on the back burner and I'd work on him and drop him for a little bit and I'd pick it back up. But anyways... Enough of that, you guys get the idea, something I wanted to make, um, he will be for sale. Also, this in this video, I'll be showing off his little monster heads. I don't, I'm not putting those in the official pictures, just because they are, you know, basically decapitated monster heads, and I don't want to um, put that on my Instagram page, but know that if you are watching this and you're considering buying him, he does come with those, so you can display him with them, and I'll show you how they work a little bit later, but... As always, we're going to take a look at the accessories first, and then we'll dive into the figure. So with that, I'm going to pop off Hulk's head, take off his helmet, pop off his head. We'll explain his alternate um, head hair pieces, um, as well as some of the other stuff he comes with. So since we have the head here, we'll dive in right away. Let me make sure I'm centered here. I think I've auto zoom on, so hopefully this is good enough. So here we have our first head, um, and only head, but first head piece. We have his Viking helmet here. Um, this took a really long time to make, I'll be honest. Basically, my idea was I only have one Red Hulk figure, and he only comes with one head, so I don't have a lot to work with. Um, and so if I want to give him a bunch of different looks, and I want um, to allow him to convert... Um, you know, his his design, his aesthetic a little bit, I'm going to need to actually make the head pieces interchangeable. You know, normally I'd just go with alt heads, but in this case, you know, I'm actually using the same head and doing conversions. So this is something a little bit new, a little bit different. I've done stuff like this a couple times, but I would say that just due to the size um, and also due to the hair detail and stuff, this is probably one of my more ambitious so um, I'm actually going to talk about the head first, and then we'll dive into both hair pieces in terms of what I did to sculpt them. So um, as you can see, underneath, it's pretty messy. Obviously, I, I didn't design him to be bald. Um, I'm not letting him go full Kratos or whatever, because then he'd just have hair on the sides, and he'd look like he's balding. And it's not very hype. It's not very cool. So decided, I was like, scrap that. That's not a good idea. So um, he's going to have, he has two hair pieces that are, one of which, you know, is always supposed to be on, obviously. Um, to get them to attach and not just sit on top, I have a magnet um, implanted into the head. And obviously we've smoothed out a lot of that area where that old um, hair piece for Red Hulk used to be um, glued in. So for the sculpt here, what I sculpted first was the beard. Um, I don't know if I've, I'm pretty sure I put an update pic of my story but you can see that I just did the whole lower beard first. And all that was was putting a giant glob of sculpt. So what I like to do is I put a giant glob of sculpt just to sort of define my shape. And then what I did first was I took my sculpting needle and I actually ran the edges of the hair where it meets into the skin. And by doing that, I've, um, you know, I'm defining my edge. I define the edge and then once I have the edge defined about how his massive hair is gonna work, then I start sculpting the lines coming down. And obviously this is very time consuming. And then I also had to cut off a lot of extra, as you can see in the back, because there's a lot of pile up that was sort of like building over the back of the chin. 
So once this was all hardened, I actually had to come back, cut a lot, and sand a lot of it off so that he had room uh, to actually peg back on to the neck. So to find my line, sculpted it all the way down. My next step was working on the mustache. So the, you know, the, the long beard braids were, are actually a separate piece from the mustache itself. So the mustache itself, I sculpted in just right, you know, up top, same thing. I defined my lines at the upper edge and then sculpted down. And then once that, this was like semi-hardened, um, I rolled out these like long strings of sculpt and actually like looped them around and twisted them on each other to get that braided look. And then I put them on either side of the mustache and then had to sculpt and blend it in. So it was really tedious. Uh, it took a lot of time, but I'm really happy with the results. And then um, the two side pieces of hair that come up around his ears actually came in later. And you can see that they have like a very angled divot. Let's see if I can get that. there. You can see they have a very like angled divot right there. And the reason why is it was originally designed to fit the helmet, as you can see there. Um, as you can see up there too. So the, so what happened was I sculpted, I, after I had done the beard and the mustache, I sculpted the helmet. Um, and in doing so, without that hair, he just had like bald gap and it looked very strange. It, it looked very strange. I needed something to fill in that space and add more volume to it. So I ended up sculpting in this hair. And um, an interesting thing was that I had to um, eventually, because I added extra volume here, not only did I have to measure it and angle it properly to the helmet, I also had to um, measure it um, to his um, other hair, his other headpiece. So that was a little bit of an interesting thing um, to work with. But, you know, here's the head. Um, all, the, all the skin has been repainted. The mouth's been repainted too. Before he had like a dark maroon, his tongue's actually pink now, uh, as you can kind of see in there. His eyes, instead of being yellow, they're actually gold. They have much more of a shimmer to it. So, I mean, I know it's Red Hulk and everything's red, but he actually has gotten like a full makeover. So, talking about this helmet now, um, I'm learning and still getting better at this, but I'm, I wor I'm working in stages and working in parts now. Um, I'm not trying to do everything in one go. So the first thing I did was I just sculpted like a bald cap on him basically. Just defined the edges of my helmet, dragged this whole front portion down, just got my edges for the crest, and then ran it all the way back. So then the thing I did after that was I came over with a second run and I actually smoothed my bald cap out a lot and then also sculpted in a lot of these details. So he's got all this extra detailing in here. And it was really important to me to make sure that you could see the lines in the patterns, but also that this helmet felt really dirty. And that came a lot in uh, with the paint job. Um, and then, so then once I had sculpted all the details up front, my fourth and final step, I did two things. Um, I sculpted this like upper crest piece, which um, you know just adds that extra dimension and layer. And we also got some nice orange in there for Red Hulk. And he glows fire. And then also I sculpted in this whole back portion here and plugged in these horns from um, the Odin Build-A-Figure from a while back, the All-Father Build-A-Figure. Um, took the horns off Odin's helmet and, pl and um, pushed them in there. And then obviously everything's been painted. So um, for this helmet, it started off um, all matte black and all matte black so that we could get some really nice deep dirt. Sorry, I'm like working a center in the viewfinder. My camera has to be off center with my stand. It's complicated, but sorry if I'm like leaning to the left a little bit more. I'll try to keep it center. Um, anyway, started as matte black for the helmet so that we could get the, that deep dirt and grime in the creases. And that was something really important to me just to make this thing feel worn. And so you'll see a lot of gold with some silver dry brushed over it, as well as some gunmetal highlights, just to really get this idea, you know, you can see it along the edges here, there's a lot of dirt and stuff. This is not a nice, clean, shiny helmet. This is something that's been through the mud and dirt and oil and sweat, and, you know, it's been knocked up. And that was something that was kind of like uh, a luxury to have in making this helmet, was that I was like, I know this is gonna be war-torn. So my sculpt doesn't need to be 
you know, nearly as clean and precise and machined. You know, these dudes were just hammering helmets out. You know, they didn't have molds, they didn't have machines. And so, you know, when I, when I get like uneven lines like that, that's perfect. You know, that adds into the character a little bit more. And, you know, with a good paint job, um, it's not sloppy. It is, you know, it's war-torn. You got a little nice dent in there, stuff like that. Some of these I did um, add on purpose as I was going, but a lot of it was just, yeah, you know, I left, I left little tiny flaws. I left little tiny, you know, edges that weren't nearly as smooth and didn't curve nearly as nicely. Uh, I just left it in because I want, when I paint it, it'll add to the wear and look of the helmet. And I think the gold mixed with the chrome silver and the gunmetal just running through it really sells that. And, um, you know, it feels like it's been chipped and knocked around a lot. So that's super fun. Uh, the horns themselves, I painted them orange first just so that I could get the orange in the cracks. And I think that's a pretty cool effect. I know it's not nearly, you know, like what Ram's horns would look like or whatever, but I'm leaning on like a Viking, you know, Asgardian inspired, you know, Norse inspired type look. So um, as you'll see in later parts of the design, we're clearly dealing with magic. So I went orange glow, that's sick. And then from there, um, I had to mix a bone color, which was white, yellow, and um, a light flesh tone. Sort of mix that together and balanced it out. And um, that's how I was able to get the paint for the horns. So that's that. Uh, we're gonna come back here real quick and talk about the paint for the beard. Um, it's all done in matte black for the base. And then I went over with the black gray tone to just bring out some of the highlights. And then actually, as you can see, on the sides of the hair here, and then also on some of the strands of the beard, he has an even like lighter white tone. We got some, some nice at the base of the chin there too. And that was um, so that I could add a little bit of age and add a little bit more um, character to the hair. And that was um, just, you know, a lighter gray, just mix some white and black together, balanced it out. And so that's how we got the highlights there. So coming to the second set of hair or second headpiece really, we have his loose Viking warrior head sculpt. And um, the reason why like we got some loose strands up front and it doesn't like loose strand all over the back is the angle of the body. Um, my camera's a little bit low right now. I'd have to like move the body all the way back. But basically you can see it here. When the head plugs in, the back of the head is like touching the you know top of the neck. So there's not a lot of room to add extra sculpt and to still preserve the shape of either the head or the the back of the figure so um, i decided to just lean into that more of like that hard cut off and it looks fine both from the front and the back it's it's a non-issue but just if anyone was wondering you know why does he have a weird haircut it's because that's all you can do with the articulation some stuff we can't you know we can't get away with everything so you know we'll mask it with the loose hair in the front so very similar to the helmet i started off with sculpting a bald cap you can see it, you can actually see it here. Uh, you can see where like the hair overlaps the bald cap and you can actually see the edge as it runs around here. Uh, and as it runs, uh, there you go, you can kind of see it there. There's like an edge that runs around the top of there. So he started off with another bald cap, obviously with another magnet planted inside it. And then after that, I took, I think about like six, six different stages to sculpt all the hair. I had to figure out like the center line that his hair was gonna kind of like be divided down. So you can see there, be divided down. So I had, so I sculpted everything. And then um, once I had sculpted, um, so the, the order I started I actually moved front to back. So I started with getting this nice wave here as well as, hold on, let me center that, there we go. Um, I started with getting that nice wave there. And then also this like upper strand that runs back. And then after that, I added in the braid, the braid that comes down here, and then I also did this long strand. And then likewise on the other side, I did the braid and then this long strand. Um, from there, I did some middle sculpting to fill in the gaps, which also gave me that more of like that, uh, what it's called like a crow's beak or something like that. Raven's, Raven's beak, I don't know, the little front nub. Um, so that was a separate side sculpt and that was just to help merge a lot of the hair in. So we did a lot of merger up front once we had our main components down. And then after that, just slowly worked back and forth to create those nice layers. Um, the physics of hair is a tough thing to mimic. Look at pictures of hair. Um, nothing falls 100% uniform. 
And that was something I had to do, um, oop, sorry, camera shake. Um, so that was something I had to do both in the beard as well as in the hairs. You can see like they are following a sort of similar direction, but there's a lot of hairs that go back and forth either way. Um, something, something that I feel like is a really good tip is if you ever feel like you have, like if you're sculpting hair, so you're like running from the root and you're like sculpting a line down and as you're sculpting more and more lines around, if you ever feel like a clump is too thick, just take your needle or whatever you're sculpting with and just run it through that big clump and just split it. And then as you're about like to finish off the split, just angle it off one way or the other. And that really um, just helps add some randomness to the hair. Um, obviously it still takes practice. Um, you know, you don't get good without just putting time in, but I feel like that, you know, hopefully will help for those trying to sculpt hair and just get a better idea of how to add some, you know, randomness to it and add some, you know, more natural flow to the hair. So that's that. And obviously it got the same paint treatment and we talked about that. So that's the heads out of the way. We're going to talk about some of the other stuff this figure comes with because he does um, come with a lot and I'm going to kind of tilt my camera this way a little bit. I don't know if that'll be helpful for the figure part, but I'm just going to sort of adjust my camera as needed because we're dealing with a much bigger figure uh, than we normally do. So the first thing we got, we have his sword here. Uh, I don't know whose sword this is. This came in a weapons lot that I got a while, while back and I've just owned it. Um, but I paint, I dry brushed it in a chrome silver and then um, added all this like green blood, this green gut stuff. Um, once again, I'm not trying to make this guy too gory. He's a warrior, but I figure, you know, green, green's a little bit more alien, a little bit more fictional. Um, it's less violent. So, you know, trying to, trying to keep it to a degree, still a little bit safe, still a little bit presentable. Um, I cut in these divots into the blade um, just to add some, you know, some chips somewhere. He's been whacking a lot of people with it. So there's some damage to it as well. And I think that's reflected in the paint job well too. I know this is shining a lot of light, but hopefully you can see like the paint job and stuff isn't fully even. I tried to do a lot of work just to get, you know, some staining and, um, you know, some actual chipping. Actually, once I painted it, I took, I took one of my like little needle tools and just sort of ran it over and just sort of tried to scrape some of it away just so that not everything looked too clean and too nice. So that's the sword. Uh, what we have here is a bunch of cut off arrows. Um, he's got some peg holes in his back that I drilled in and I sized up. And so um, in a more war torn version of the character, you can plug these into his back and I'll show that off a little bit later on in the review. And um, once again, if you guys, or not once again, I haven't said it yet, but I do have a full album that will be going up on my Instagram page. So if you want to see, you know, him more posed up, that's where you should go. But we got some arrows there to add to the fun. Speaking of stuff that goes onto his back, uh, I have a pelt that I cut off a stuffed lion. The stuffed lion, I used it for my Craven custom. So if you guys have been here, like since year one, you'll remember some of this lion fur, but use the same thing. Um, put a magnet on it, sealed up a lot of the edges so that we wouldn't get a bunch of fur falling off everywhere. And so yeah, now we have a pelt that we can uh, magnet onto his back. We'll take a look at that. The other thing we have are his two alternate hands. He has his two gripping fists on right now. Um, his two alternate hands, we have his um, wrapped hand, which he can also hold the sword in. Um, since we're here, I might as well show it off. Basically, this hand was the you know left equivalent of the open hand. What I did was I cut off all the fingers here um, and then, you know, put them at a new angle and fit them around the blade. Um, you can see this just wiggles in right there. It's not very difficult at all. Um, had, to fit, had to fit the fingers around the blade and then put sculpt in that gap. Once the sculpt was in that gap, I had to do a ton of topical sculpt to um, make this wrap and obviously paint the wrap. We got some splashes of red as well as some green on the knuckles here. Um, you know, he's been fighting. He's been hitting people. He's been going through it. Um, the fisted hand, um, you know, the left fisted hand actually doesn't have the wrap, but he does have some bruising on his hand. So you can see sort of like the, you know, after effects of war. You know, he wraps it up, but he's still fighting. And you can see him a little bit battle damaged in his clenched fist there. Um, on the flip side, we have... Um, his sort of like brass knuckles hand. 
we got some nice runes painted in there. This is just rune, you know, this is just Norse rune alphabet. Um, this has no meaning. Some of his other tattoos do have meaning, and we'll get into that. But as you can see, the band runs all the way around the hand, um, making sure there's consistency in the sculpt there. And uh, I'm really happy with this. Um, an interesting thing is I, um, in order to follow with the rest of his bands, which were originally going to be the bands of Sidorak, so like what powered Juggernaut, I ended up painting them silver so that you could see the runes that, um, that I wanted to put in. And so now they look more just like Asgardian magic and a little bit less like, uh, you know, mystic Sidorak magic. But we got that in there. It's pretty cool. But since these were originally, you know, these are original sculpt, I actually took the Juggernaut bands and I actually rolled them over the top of the sculpt in order to get that bumpy texture in there so that it matches the other bands on his arm. So that's a fun thing and we'll be able to compare it later once we look at the body. Um, the last thing are the two monster heads that he does come with. This is an abomination build a figure head that I turned into sort of like a rock, you know, um, Helheim demon. And then what I assume is like a frost giant type head from Jotunheim. So, um, you know, Red Hulk's been making his way around uh, the world tree, the nine realms. So he's been doing work. So he's got some, he's got some heads from foes he's slain. Cool. So we've taken a look at everything. I'm going to just push these to the side for now. We're going to bring in the main body here, and I'm going to change the angle of my camera again. I'm going to drag it back a little bit. Uh, drag it up and back. There we go. That should give us a pretty good look for now. Um, and since we're here, we're going to talk about the accessories and how you can plug them in real quick. Um, there's an exposed magnet on the top of the neck. And the reason why I did an exposed magnet is the pelt, it doesn't weigh a lot, but because it's so far, so close up to here, I wanted to have a really strong magnetic connection. So I left the magnet exposed so that um, it connects and it clips on better. Had I covered it up with sculpt, um, obviously the connection would not be as strong and I was gonna be afraid of it falling off. So we have an exposed magnet up there, but you tilt his head back, you put his hair on, and you know, obviously along with the pelt or without the pelt, you really can't see it. So it hides and conceals really nicely. You see as you bend the figure back, you still can't see it. So I'm happy with how that turned out. Um, the other thing we do have is the arrows in his back. So um, I drilled holes and then I actually had to fill the holes with sculpt and um, measure them up to the arrows. Um, all the arrows fit, but I sort of have like a preferred um, way, like I have a preferred way that they all display. So I'm putting those in right now and then we'll flip him around let me put his hair piece on. Bring the camera up and back. And now you can see that we have him sort of battle damaged up. He's got the arrows coming out of his back. You know, his hair's loose. You know, maybe we'd have him, you know, posed up with his sword or something like that. So that's super fun. And I, I thought it was a fun little addition to have. Since we're here and talking about stuff being plugged in, I'm going to take the hair off. I'm going to magnet that on, let it drape over his shoulders, and then also put on his helmet. And now we have him as a much more like, you know, Viking preparing for war look. You know, this is him before the battle. He's, he's looking all glorious with that pelt on. And I love the pelt. It really adds a lot of mass to the shoulders. I think it makes him a lot more intimidating. So I think that's a really fun um, addition to have. So we're gonna drop those off. Uh, we'll leave the helmet on him for now. So let's take a look at the individual components that make this figure cool, or at least what I think makes him cool. Um, I think the best thing to do is we'll start from the bottom, go down. So we've already talked about the head. I actually realized that in order to appreciate the tattoos, I should remove the head. So. Head's going to pop off, and let's bring him up and in. So, um, in doing tattoos, and I would say in doing anything that's inspired by another culture, make sure you do research. Um, I think it's extremely disrespectful if you don't know or care about the things you're pulling inspiration from. 
Um, I did my best to do as much research and go back as far as possible. And um, as many of these tattoos as I could, I based off of um, real life stuff that I could find. And I know that even the idea of Viking tattoos is a little bit controversial in terms of like, did they, did they not? So I based off of as much um, Norse design as I could, as I could find in terms of runes and whatnot. So um, on the right shoulder, we have, I believe you say it is Jurgamundir, which is the world serpent, the serpent that wraps around um, Midgard and eats its own tail. So um, obviously we have the serpent head. You can see the eyes and you can see the eye right up there and you can see the nose at the front, which I think is pretty fun. It's got some fangs, which is cool. And the design, it wraps around the shoulder. Um, it comes around the top of the shoulder, yeah, wraps all the way back around, rotates around and then actually dips under the arm meets up at the bottom of the chest and then wraps around the chest to come back to the mouth. Um, all of this is hand painted. It took an extremely long time, but I'm super happy with it. So we have the world serpent that wraps around there. Coming to the main part of the chest, we have the, there's a little bit of dust there, I think. <sighs> there we go. Dust's gone. That wasn't a paint chip. That was dust. We have um, the Mjolnir Norse symbol. Um, so Thor's hammer. We have that tattooed on his chest. Um, this set of runes right here was um, just a common um, grouping that I was seeing through some images I could find. Um, what I'm realizing, at least in trusting the internet, is there's a lot of variations of translation for these runes. Some of them have very universal meaning, but a lot of the a, a lot of like the singular runes themselves have multiple meanings. And so it's really hard to decipher what this grouping meant but it was there, and so um, I trusted it. What I have over here is a um, Norse, you know, a Nordic rune for a, for a compass. So, you know, um, I saw this as a pretty classic design as well, you know, just, um, you know, seeking direction, um, either in battle or in travel. Um, he's got some tattoos under his ribs there, and once again, let me, let me, push the, let me see if I can push the cloth down a little bit. There you go. Um, you can kind of see it in there. N another common group in, um, hard to say what they mean, which is unfortunate, but I tried to look for the meaning of as many of them as I could. Um, up here, we have the Aegis Shield, um, a common rune for protection. And so something I decided to um, incorporate as well. Um, to his left forearm, we have um, a Viking ship, you know, symbolic of travel, obviously, and safe travel, ideally. Um, we have a very classic berserker rune on the front of his bicep right there. Um, you know, classic for warriors. Moving around to the back, I followed up with... Oh, man, I forgot what this was. I believe it's a rune for protection. Man, that one slips my mind. I actually feel really bad for that. But I'm pretty sure that's another rune for protection. Uh, very similar to the shield. And then on the inside of his arm, uh, gotta rotate him around. Um, I have some lettering right here. These don't, this is just alphabet stuff. These, if I remember correctly, I didn't, I wasn't able to incorporate meaning to those. Um, I was, however, able to incorporate meaning based off some of the translations I was able to see of these runes to this one right here. Funny enough, it looks like bit in English, like Bitcoin, but um, from the translations I was able to find, I believe that this roughly should translate to um, peace awaits justice. And I thought that was something cool to have tattooed on, you know, Red Hulk, it's a little bit of an anti-hero at times, but he's definitely a hero. So peace awaits justice on his arm, especially on his sword holding arm. I think that's pretty tight. So we got that going. Um, like I talked about bruising, got some nice bruises on here. Originally, the fist was supposed to um, have much more bright green blood, sort of like what we were seeing on the hand and on the sword. And then I thought about it and I was like, well, if it's being absorbed by the sword, all he's going to have left is bruises. So um, painted them over, faded them in, and um, turned them into bruises. Coming around to the right arm now, we have his, what were going to be bands of Sidorak and instead are just enchanted bands. Um, I was inspired a little bit by the 
Oh, what was the comic called? I think it happened a year or two ago. It was where, like, the Marvel universes clashed with each other, and, like, Venom became imbued with Asgardian magic, as well as a bunch of other heroes. And, like, the Frost Giants were in New York. And Captain America wielded, like, a sword and shield, and, like, Luke Cage and Spider-Man were with them. I don't remember what it was called. I feel, I feel like a, I feel like a betrayer for not knowing, but I was inspired w about the glowing, um, glowing, blue glowing runes. There we go. And so that's what I ended, I, I ended up taking that inspiration and turning that into the bands. Um, this is just uh, Nordic alphabet, Norse, Norse lettering. That's all it is. Um, these have no meaning, and the only reason why they have no meaning, because I thought about doing it, was um, I had to equally space these out around the whole band, and they sit on the inside of the arm too, as you can see. Um, and just trying to spell out words or adding messages while equally spacing them out was just going to be too difficult, especially since I had to eyeball it all. And so instead of writing something I didn't mean, um, it's just going to be letters. So we have that. And then we talked about it on the other hand, but yes, on the fist as well, we have um, lettering, um, same in that glowing blue style. Sorry for the camera shake. And um, it is the exact same as what shows up on the alternate hand. So they are matching. Uh, coming down to the belt, this is a cool thing. This whole belt section was super fun to make, but the first thing I did was I made the... Um, I made the... Ba -da 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 belt buckle, I guess, this big crest piece. And so we have a bunch of Nordic runes, once again, just alphabet running around it. And then we have um, another um, classic rune in here. Off the top, I don't remember what it was because this might be a compass. If this is a compass, this is another rune for protection along with the shield. They were alternating. I don't remember off the top and I apologize for that. Um, I'm sorry to those who have Norse heritage if I am flustering through some of this. A lot of these symbols look very similar, and that's just due to the fact that I can't educate myself fully on these things. There's a lot of gray area, I feel like, in some of the mythology and stuff, so I did my best, so I apologize, but yes, I do have that here. Um, this belt was pulled from the Juggernaut Build-A-Figure, and what I did was I took some fabric, I ran it all the way around just to fill up some of the gaps there, and then I glued um, I glued bits and pieces of it down to the belt base itself, um, so that you, it felt like the fabric was just tattering around, um, you know, just to help with the binding and whatnot. And then this lower skirt piece here is actually like the jacket from um, the Alex Storm Collectibles figure. I did a Storm Collectibles bane a while back, and I just had this sitting here, and this was perfect to add some more and it's just some extra, you know, volume um, to the body itself. So we have that. We also have some chains that run around from the front of the belt to the back. And those, what they do is the heads are magnetic. And so you can take the heads from the foes he's conquered and connect them up. Hold on, i got to move this back. Uh, where's the magnet? This The magnet in the Helheim head is a little bit... There we go. I found it. So you can take these... You can take these heads, drop them on the belt. Maybe scoop that one up a little higher so it fits more. There we go. So you can see, you can put them on the belt. You can carry them with him as a, you know, as a symbol to intimidate his foes. So I think that's pretty tight. Uh, that was just a fun detail I wanted to add, and once again, you'll get them if you purchase the figure. So I think that's a very cool addition. Coming down to the legs here, um, I did take apart the whole inside, one, to install the belt, and two, um, to add some range of movement. Uh, normally, there's a lot um, of extra plastic here that limits his movement, so he gets a much higher kick now and a much higher um, kick out to the side um, due to the fact that I cleared a lot of plastic out of the way. I also filled in the peg holes, as you can see, there's no peg hole here or on the inside, you know, or on any of the, um, on the pants of the figure. So, 
um, seamless body as well, which is really nice. Um, the pants have, obviously this has all been repainted with black and some brown detailing. We also got some, you can see some highlights of dirt and some gray in there as well. So um, really tried to go out all out on this guy. Um, and then, so these pants likewise have some lighter gray um, painted into it just to help bring out the um, nice texturing that's already on the pants itself. Then we come back down to, then we come down to the boots. Um, the pants normally on the figures just sort of tatter out. So I actually cut off all the tattering in a straight line and then sculpted, you know, the edges of the boots on either side and added some detail in there. And then um, I took off the normal Hulk feet and replaced them with the uh, juggernaut feet. And I know there is a little bit of a lip out the back, but it does allow him to go on his tippy toes and not have to, you know, run into any um, confliction there with the sculpt. So it actually adds to his articulation to a degree. And then what I did was I actually, I have a ton of old Batman capes from Mezco figures. So I actually cut them up into strips and wrapped them um, around um, either foot and then um, glued them in place and also glued some folds together so that um, there would be some permanent um, sort of creasing in it. Um, the boots have all been painted with um, leather brown Angelus paint as well as a lighter brown um, Vallejo paint. And then what I also did was I came in with some white, some white and gray, and um, sponged it on to the boots as you can see on the leather. And that just helps mimic some of the look of snow and ash that would end up on his boots after, um, you know, a battle as well. I also realized I forgot, I, I did sculpt this armband here. And if we take a close look, uh, you can see that it is, it does have a leather texture through it. I don't know how that well that's gonna come up. Hopefully it comes up pretty clear. There it is, now you can really see it. You have a leather texture imprinted throughout the whole band. And so just a lot of, a lot of detail that I've put into this guy. Um, I'm pretty sure I covered everything here. I think that covers the whole review. Um, this guy was a big project, honestly, a very, very big project. Um, but I think he was totally worth it. I really wanted to go all out and, um, you know, see this, see this vision through of a Asgardian. Sorry, I'm gonna have to pull him off camera real quick to pop out the hand. There we go, takes a little bit more force. Um, but really wanted to see my vision through of a Norse Asgardian inspired Red Hulk. And I think, um, you know, I was able to bring that to life in a lot of ways. Um, it was really fun being able to research a lot of uh, Norse mythology. And I did my best to get the imagery right. I'm sorry that I don't know um, all the names and meanings of everything. It was really tough to figure all that out, but um, hopefully I did, um, you know, whoever comes from that heritage, I hope that I did it to a degree of justice and that this does feel, um, you know, true to the history um, to a degree. So that's what, he, that's what he looks like all geared out. I love it. I'm super proud of him. Um, he will be for sale on my page. Um, and speaking of my page, if you want to see more updates, if you want to see the full album of his pictures or anything else I'm working on, um, my Instagram page is the place to be. Uh, I accept commissions. I take messages. Um, I'm always willing to help out new customizers. Just DM me on Instagram. My username is Tosh underscore customs. You can find my Instagram name in the description of this video, as well as a link in the about section of my channel page. So, um, you know, I hope this video has been informative. I hope that um, I've been able to shine some light into, you know, different things about customizing. And I'm always happy to help the community. The community's helped me a lot. And, you know, I love, I love giving back and helping people out where I can. So hopefully you've liked this video. I really like this guy. I think he's one of probably one of the bigger, what I would call like a Titan scale figure. Um, the only other ones that I can think of are like my Venom Hulk and my, Ven or yeah, my Venom Hulk and my Venom Pool. Um, so I haven't done too many on this scale, but I am pretty proud of it. 
Also, I realized that I haven't done a size comparison. He's the same size as, um, you know, most, you know, all the, and he really hasn't gotten any taller. I think these boots are a little bit thicker, so he has a little bit of height, but um, just for the sake of it, this is him standing next to a seven inch McFarlane figure. You can see he towers over him. And then this is him standing next to, um, let me pull out Frogman because one of my favorite little guys I have right now. I do need to repaint Frogman. But here's him standing next to Frogman, who's a little bit shorter. And so you can see that the you know Red Hulk just is a skyscraper compared to them. So very intimidating frame, and I think the I think the whole build you know adds adds a lot of weight to him and a lot of impact. So that's all I got. Thank you all for watching. I'm I'm glad you made it through these 40 minutes. If you're here. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe to the channel. Please follow me on Instagram. I appreciate the support. It's not necessary, but if you like what I'm doing here, um, that's the way you can let me know. And I'm not, I'm not going to ramble anymore. I'm kind of short for words. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will catch you all later. Take care.